Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today we will be learning on understanding the environment. In this video, we will learn the basics of environment, habitat, ecosystem, components of ecosystem, and the effect of abiotic components on terrestrial autotrophs. Let us learn what is environment. Environment can be defined as a sum total of all the living and non-living elements and their effects that influence human life. While all living or biotic elements are animals, plants, forests, fisheries, and birds, non-living or abiotic elements include water, land, sunlight, rocks, and air. What is a habitat? Habitat is the physical environment in which an organism lives. It can also be called as address of an organism. Many organisms share the same habitat, which have similar requirements. A habitat always has life in it, but the environment need not have life in it. All habitats are environment, but all environments are not habitats. Now let us look on what ecosystem is about. It is a functional unit of nature, where living organisms interact among themselves and with the surrounding physical environment in which they live, such that energy is exchanged and system-level processes, such as the cycling of elements, emerge. In an ecosystem, biotic and abiotic components are linked together through different nutrient cycles and flow of energy. Ecosystems are classified into terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. Every species in an ecosystem depends on other species for survival and the elements which are also part of ecological community. Now let us look about the components of ecosystems which is divided into biotic and abiotic components. Biotic components include the producers, consumers and decomposers while the abiotic components includes the rain, light, wind, temperature and others. Let us look in detail about the biotic components, starting with primary producers also known as autotrophs. Organisms that acquire their energy from sunlight and materials from abiotic components for producing their own food. Primary producers, self-nourishing, are green plants, certain bacteria and cyanobacteria blue-green algae that carry out photosynthesis. In the aquatic ecosystem, microscopic algae, plankton, are the primary producers. Followed by the consumers or heterotrophs for here, organisms incapable of producing their own food and depends on organic food derived from plants, animals or both. It can be divided into, namely the micro and macro consumers. Micro consumers includes phagotrophs which are tiny organisms that feed by ingesting organic matter or organisms. Osmotrophs are organisms that obtain their nutrients through the uptake of dissolved organic matter from the ambient medium through osmosis. Saprotrophs also known as decomposers where bacteria and fungi, such as mushroom which obtain energy and nutrients from dead organic substances and finally detrivers such earthworms and certain soil organisms, such as nematodes and arthropods, are detritus feeders and help decompose organic matter. Next, let us look about the macro consumers. Herbivores are the primary consumers that feed mainly on plants such as sheep, rabbit while secondary consumers feed on primary consumers such as wolves, dogs. Snakes followed by tertiary consumers carnivores that feed on both primary and secondary consumers such as lions, snakes and finally omnivores are organisms that consume both plants and animals such as man, bear. Having learnt about the biotic components now, let us learn about the abiotic components and its impact on autotrophs. Let us start with light. Extremely high intensity favors root growth more than shoot growth resulting in increased transpiration, short stem, and smaller, thicker leaves. On the other hand, low-intensity light retards growth, flowering, and fruiting. When the light intensity is less than the minimum, the plants cease to grow due to the accumulation of CO2. Of the visible part of the spectrum, only red and blue are effective in photosynthesis. Plants grown in blue light are small, Red light results in the elongation of cells, etiolated plants. Plants grown in ultraviolet light are dwarf. Next comes the frost. Frost results in freezing the soil moisture. 
The plants are killed due to increased transpiration when their roots cannot supply moisture. Water in the intercellular spaces of the plant gets frozen into ice. This results in an increased concentration of salts and dehydration of cells. Also, frost leads to canker formation. Various plant diseases with similar symptoms are caused by different fungi, bacteria, and viruses. Followed by snow where it shortens the period of vegetative growth. It acts as a blanket, prevents a further drop in temperature, and protects seedlings from excessive cold and frost. Accumulation of snow on tree parts can break the branches or even uproot the tree and finally temperature high temperature results in the death of plants due to coagulation of protoplasmic proteins. Some bacteria can survive high temperatures because of their protoplasmic proteins that do not coagulate at normally high temperatures. High temperature disturbs the balance between respiration and photosynthesis. It also results in the desiccation of plant tissues and depletion of moisture. Other factors include rainfall, organic compounds, inorganic compounds, change in altitude and nutrient cycles. However, one single factor cannot make an impact on autotrophs. For more lectures, do subscribe the channel. Thank you.